Good morning, Nashville. Thanks for waking up with us on your Friday. We are still under a 4-1 weather alert, so Stefano's here to tell us about that. Stefano, we saw some storms yesterday and could see even more of that today. We could see a little more. Right now, we're following breaking news from overnight. Police are investigating a shooting in the Madison area. We know that it happened just after 10 last night near the intersection of Norman Drive and Van Trees Road. Police say a suspect was chasing a man and shooting from a car. The victim lost control of his car and went into an embankment. The car rolled over several times and the victim was thrown out. We know he has serious but not life threatening injuries and at this time we don't have any information on the suspect. We'll be sure to bring you any updates we receive both on air and inside our free News 4 app. Right now, the latest executive order from Governor Bill Lee is being misinterpreted. It's enough for his office to send an email to lawmakers addressing conspiracy theories. News 4's Cameron Taylor is sharing the governor's reaction to the order. Bill. The sections of the executive order being misunderstood have also been included in previous orders. If you want to read the full email to state lawmakers, we have that posted right now on the News 4 app. Right now, Tennessee is reporting more than 5,500 new infections from the coronavirus. This is another spike in cases over the past couple of days. Currently, more than 2,000 people are battling the virus in our state's hospitals. Now, according to their Facebook page, Sumner Regional Medical Center says there are no beds available and that it's impossible to find an empty ICU, ER, or surgery bed in the mid-state. This morning, we're hearing from another doctor who was at the infamous Williamson County School Board meeting earlier this week. That meeting has since made national news. He tells us before he even walked to his car, he grabbed his wife and reminded her that their message has always been clear. This is about saving lives. That was Dr. Maxwell speaking, and he was not threatened. He left the meeting before things got out of hand. But in that video, you can hear one man saying, we know who you are. You can leave freely, but we will find you. Dr. Fauci went on to talk about schools doing in-person learning this fall. He says we have to do everything we can to keep kids in school, considering the current crisis. An official with the World Health Organization says the pandemic may have come from an infected Chinese lab worker. A WHO investigator had concerns about biosafety at a lab close to the market where the first cases came from. That lab may have not handled COVID properly, but when the WHO released its report, they found that a lab leak was extremely unlikely to have caused COVID in humans. Critics say that the WHO investigation is flawed because it was not intended to find a link to the lab. The FDA authorized another COVID-19 vaccine dose for certain immunocompromised people. The third dose is for cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy or those with solid organ transplants. The additional dose should be taken at least 28 days after the second. The emergency use authorization does not apply to healthy people who are fully vaccinated. Doctors at Vanderbilt say despite being vaccinated, people with compromised immune systems are still at a much higher risk of becoming breakthrough cases or even sent to the hospital for COVID. Now on four, convicted killer Stephen Wiggins sits on death row this morning. That's after a jury sentenced him yesterday. Wiggins shot and killed Baker during a traffic stop in 2018. Michael Warwick shares the emotional moment Baker's family has waited for for more than three years. Now, as we all deal with the excessive heat, people around the country are facing some pretty rough storms. We have new video to show from all over the country. We start here in Michigan, where severe storms left a huge mess behind. Here's a closer look for you. Trees are down all over the roads and power is out in a lot of spots. The storm knocked down power lines, leaving some sparking on the ground. Around 600,000 people in the state were without power. Many will be left in the dark until sometime this weekend. Here's another look at Michigan, this time from Detroit. You can see how heavy that rain was coming down. The strong storm lasted for several hours, turning roads into rivers. Do you see that? Now crews are working to remove trees that are down on a lot of homes and cars. But so far, there are no reports of any major damage in the area. That's amazing. And we were all complaining about some of those storms starting to roll through in Middle Tennessee stuff. And Listen, it was helpful yesterday because it was hot. <laughs> I needed and it. That was the only way that we could cool down is if we got those storms yesterday. I, I was all right with that. And the good news is, you know, we didn't see anything on the severe side yeah. yesterday. Today, 
Now for you on four, the U.S. Census numbers are in and we're learning how much Nashville grew in the last decade. This morning, we're also taking a look at how the United States changed as a whole over the past decade. The census numbers show that the country is becoming more diverse. Population growth across the country is being driven by people of color, mostly in metro areas. More than 33 million people identified as being two or more races in the census. That's up 9 million. Right now, it's believed the child was on a bike when they were hit. The crash is currently under investigation. And a woman is hit by a car in Nashville overnight. This was along Murfreesboro Pike in Antioch around 1230 this morning. Fortunately, her injuries are believed to be non life threatening. Police say she stepped into the road and they're trying to figure out why. The driver did stop at the scene and will not be charged. News from the FDA went as expected. They gave the stamp of approval for the first round of booster shots. It amended the emergency use authorization for the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines to allow a third dose for certain people with compromised immune systems. School districts were gearing up to fight Kentucky's governor over a mask mandate this week. But those districts now have another fight. Brittany Weiner is at the alert desk. And Lumen says that's not her only concern about the nursing home. She says on the day she worked there, she got pricked by a dirty needle and no one has returned her calls to find out if the patient was infected in any way. The response from Treveca says she did not follow standard safety measures. Lumen is now filing complaints with the state. A $10,000 reward has been approved to help solve an April murder. Sharon Gillespie was murdered in Lawrenceburg several months ago. She was found shot outside the summit, the place where she worked. So far, police have not been able to track down a suspect. Police are investigating a shootout that happened inside of a Tennessee mall, and an innocent bystander is the only one that was injured in the ordeal. This happened at Hamilton Place Mall in Chattanooga. Here are some videos from inside the mall in the aftermath. The police say it's unclear if this was gang related, but there's no threat to the public. No suspects are in custody at this time. Take a good look at these pictures on your screen right now. Murfreesboro police need your help tracking down a suspected bank robber. The Smith County Sheriff's Office is looking for a potentially armed suspect this morning. Officials are investigating in the 300 block of Flat Rock Road. Here's what we know so far. The white male was wearing a blue shirt and gray shorts. Party bus safety issues just keep picking up steam. A new organization formed to keep the industry in line. Last month, a 22 year old tourist fell over the railing of a party bus and then was run over by it. The group Safe Fun Nashville has since formed to call on regulations for open air party buses and tractors. The city currently does not have the authority to regulate these vehicles. That has to be granted by state law, a process that was interrupted by the pandemic. Later on tonight, it is the return of the East Nashville Tomato Festival. Final preps are underway at five points. The entire event started around an art show focused on tomatoes and other fruits and vegetables. Well, it's evolved into much more than that over the years, but it does still hold on to its origins. All centered around, of course, tomatoes. Love that little clock behind him, too. So again, the whole thing kicks off tonight and will run through tomorrow. The Pentagon announced that they will send in around 3000 more troops to assist. The move comes as the Taliban seizes another capital in an unrelenting sweep across the country. Melissa Rainey reports new video of a site you never want to see while you're doing your laundry. A man goes ballistic in a Tokyo laundromat, throwing clothes and destroying doors. Now it starts off normal. He's just acting like any other customer, right? Well, then the madness begins as he kicks a dryer and starts to toss other people's clothes on the floor. He even slammed a rack into the glass door. George King Thompson climbed the 23 story tower without ropes. King Thompson wants to highlight awareness of climate change through his journey. Fortunately for this climb, the building essentially has ladder like structures all the way up to the top. What do you think, Stefano? Could you do it? No. Or would you even want to? I, I feel like I'd want to if I had a harness. Yeah. Without that, Without no thank you. I, I do not trust my abilities that much. 23 stories. No. Your arms uh, would be burning. Maybe, maybe two stories without a harness. <laughs> that's a, a ladder. And, that's and, and clean the gutters, it. and then that that's about it. <laughs> I can't do anything other than that. Could you do it? No. Would you try, though, if you had a harness? 
Yes, I think it'd be Okay, fun. all right. It's adventurous. That's all that matters right in the long run. I need run. the ropes, though. Come on. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea. All right. A six-year-old Milwaukee boy is trying to get a new home in one of the most creative ways possible. Starting with just a paper clip, Jackson Promo is trying to trade his way all the way to the top. His mom told him about a story of someone doing it successfully in 2005, so Jackson decided it would be a great way to help his family out. In just three days, he's already traded up to these two lawnmowers. He's getting some help, too. The community already donated some items to his cause. <laughs> Plus, Jackson already has 716 trading partners on his Facebook page, trying to help him work his way up to a house. Anything that doesn't wind up being traded will be donated to charity. Oh,